India Bastian. And I'm Aubrey Calvin. And this is Southern Queries. Exploring all things LGBTQ in the South. Welcome to Southern Queries and happy fall, everyone. Bree, how's it going? I am doing good, India. I am enjoying the fall. My wife and daughter are in the throes of fall decorating with everything in my house being orange and yellow and brown, even though it's still like 85 degrees. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we have pumpkins and everything, so we're doing good. She's They're very into seasonal decorating. How are you doing? Unfortunately, I'm not seasonally decorating, and I kind of wish I was. I do have um, a... Live with you for a while then, because it's overwhelming over here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, you know, I have a guest room. I, I think I have like a fall wreath somewhere mm. that I made in the attic that I eventually will ask Allison to bring down for me. But otherwise I flake out pretty quickly. And then I'm sad that I don't decorate more. <laughs> really? Why don't you decorate more? Um, I think decorations are expensive. Yes. Um, so you need to store them somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And then the storage. So I don't know, one but day. This is the season where people decorate because it goes from fall, like Halloween, then you leave the hollow, you take off, you take down the ghosts, and then it becomes Thanksgiving. Like that's the only difference between Halloween and Thanksgiving is a ghost or a skeleton. True. And then it's a Thanksgiving, and then you take it down and put up Christmas. And I just stay in my office where it's holiday free. Yeah, I guess my struggle is um you know, I want to do really cool art installations for Halloween and I get really into it. And then I don't have time and uh, crafts are expensive here in the States In Mexico, everything was just cheaper. <laughs> well, um, what do you need? My wife probably has it upstairs in the studio. Seriously, come true. over and come uh, over, rate her stash. She seriously would not mind. <laughs> Good point. I didn't think about that. Not joking. Use, you, you, remember, I married to a celebrity scrapbooker. We have so much stuff. And my daughter is just as crafty. Just come use our stuff for free. We I might take you up on this. <laughs> we honestly don't care. We, just, we don't care. Um, but today I do want to jump right in and talk with our guest, Sophie Santos. She is a multi-talented comedian, singer, and now an author. Her book is called The One You Want to Marry and Other Identities I've Had. It's out now on Amazon and their LGBTQ focused imprint topple books. I'm very excited to talk to Sophie today. Oh my, I'm excited to talk to Sophie. I mean, just reading this book uh, this past weekend, I noticed that Sophie and I have a lot of in common just in our backgrounds, mm. but they kind of manifest themselves in very different ways. So I'm interested to talk to her. Me too. Let's get her on the show. So Sophie, welcome to Southern Queries. First of all, how are you doing? <laughs> wow, um, I'm doing great. Um, yeah, I'm doing great. Um, I am, you know, I feel like with the book, I'm just riding the momentum right now, riding the wave of the unknown, which is actually really fun. And it's, uh, which for me is very fun because it used to be not fun <laughs> to like, <laughs> I'm super type A and I have to know, like, you know, I also, I have to know, like, it's like instant gratification. I need to know what's going to happen like tomorrow and all of that. And so to just kind of be like, oh no, I'm just going to surrender and, and let go is a big step. So um, go and talk to what whoever <laughs> the publicist says you're talking to next, right? Yeah, wow, you're making me sound more more of a big shot than I am. But you yes, are a thank big you. shot. Oh my god, you are a big shot. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> We're super pumped to have you on the show. Um, I have been so excited, and um, Aubrey's been doing all the listening. I've been doing all of the social media stalking. So it's been wow, super huge. <laughs> yeah, we coming at it from all up. angles. We yeah. divide things up based on you know. Talking Interest? to people. Yeah. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> um, well, right, I'm so curious. And oh, I'm sorry. You ahead. wanted to get Go into ahead. it. I was going to say, I'm curious to know what you discovered. Or is there anything out there that I should be, you know, worried about? 
Not to no. my knowledge so far. Not to my knowledge great. either. Mm-mm. Okay. All great. Right. The back background check worked is working. Well, out. we do want to ask about the arrest you had when you were 15. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Something about Canada and the border yes. and meth or stealing a horse. <laughs> right. Well, you kind of you you kind of covered it. So okay. All I right. Think cool. I think that's it. Um, that's, they can look that up on backgroundcheck.com. Cool. Come, yeah. No, that's totally made up. Totally <laughs> made up. Okay, that didn't happen. But uh, first of all, how do you identify? Oh, um, I identify as she, they. She, they. And you're a lesbian? And I am a lesbian. Okay, it is, I, believe it or not, I'm a lesbian. I asked because <laughs> that was what we were told, but we always want people to be able to self identify. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Well, I appreciate yeah. that, but yeah, no, definitely lesbian. Um, I always make a joke though that like, cause I host a comedy show um, in mm-hmm. New York and LA called the Lesbian Agenda. It's like, what if I wasn't? And this is right? a way to get climb the ladder, you know? <laughs> exactly. Queer is cool. <laughs> Queer is cool. So You're make just that money. Pretending <laughs> to be a lesbian. <laughs> you no, never you know. know. Yeah, the, this whole time for the like, book a, for everything. This is yep. just a scam. <laughs> Are you also pretending to be Filipina? Yes. Is this game yes. too? Yeah, somehow <laughs> I'm getting away with that too. Yeah. Awesome. So um, speaking of your identity, I want to talk a little bit about your childhood. We know that you were a military kid and moved around a lot. So I want to start off our first question. What was it like being an army kid? And what would you say is your favorite place that you have lived? in um (laughs) be around um being uh an army kid was uh I mean it was cool like uh, it it obviously like I didn't realize how much psychological damage it it actually did to me (laughs) growing you know when you get to be an adult you're like oh my god this is why I'm like I am the way that I am I don't and I mean that and with the deepest respect to my father obviously to the military but the constant moving around, I was obviously constantly shape shifting, having to fit into my surroundings and never really had my feet on the ground. So I didn't really know who I was. Right. And so that all kind of caught up with me, you know, when I'm in my early twenties. Um, so that had, so that was a reality check, but the cool thing about being a military kid is on the flip side though, at the time, and even now I did like moving around a lot. You know, I do like being, on the go and it really um, obviously especially now that I'm today um and um, very medicated but as far as the favorite place <laughs> for anxiety and OCD so um, I mean I, I, really I wish I could like, say Germany like but I was a baby and I don't uh, even remember you know, it I'm on like the move sort of because person I, like, so to, like, the, I never got to have that experience grow up of, like living fast, overseas again like, as an adult negative, like my dad went to Korea and I, was, I was like packed ready to go and my mom was like, no, we're staying. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> um, no. That doesn't make sense. So well, no. my wife was born in Germany, you know, because uh, oh. she was, I'm an Air Force brat. I'm an Air Force kid. And Uh-oh, I married well, an, another military kid and she was born in Germany. So, uh, but we uh-huh. moved every four to five years, not every two or one or two years. We had longer stays in places than I think you did. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was like every two years. And then sometimes it'd be in the middle of a year. Um, but I really loved Kansas city. Um, I really loved growing up there. I think Kansas city is such a cool town. Um, it's only gotten cooler over the years. Uh, now our football team is, well, I was about to say great, but bad this season, but they are normally great. The chiefs. (laughs) Um, and, uh, and you know, I, I love the South, you know, my grandparents lived there all their lives. They, they lived in, they lived in Moss Point until they moved over to Wiggins, Mississippi. And it really shaped who I was as a person. And, you know, and then obviously living in Alabama from when I was in middle school to high school, which was in a little small town called Arab. Anyone's <laughs> heard of it? Yes. Um, time, like, you know, having a Southern upbringing, especially with the parents that I did, you know, with more liberal, like my mom is so liberal. Like I was able to kind of have the best of both worlds of like, you know, run around barefoot, but like not worried about, you know, but feeling secure at home. Do you know what I mean? And I get the good food, but I don't have to deal with, you know, the normal trauma that is normally tied to the, the conversation while you're eating the food. <laughs> um, so if that, if that answers your question, I know I went around the world literally. Well, no, I mean, I think it does because you kind of touched on a lot of the things I was reading in your book, how you had 
a lesbian babysitter and your mom was just friends with a bunch of lesbians and everything. And so it was just totally <laughs> cool environment. Uh, yeah. But, and maybe you can help settle this for us because in your book, you talk about, you know, living in Kansas, growing up in Kansas City, but also spending time in Missouri since, you know, Kansas City borders is two t- different states. Do you consider Missouri to be part of the South? No. It's Midwest. It's like <laughs> Kansas, right? I think it's Midwest. Midwesterners would say, they would they would argue with me. I was so funny. I was just having an argument with some other night and about what's the South. Yes, I'm going to get a lot right? of for this. So yes. can, I, can, I start, can I stir the pot? Can I start yeah, some controversy? Well, this is my question though. What is, this is the question I've had starting the show. Where does the South end? So please tell me. Okay. So the South is five yes. states. Okay. It's Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Louisiana, and Tennessee. And the way That's I it? think about it wow. is Wow. <laughs> I think about it, I think about it is who's in the SEC. And I don't count Texas. I don't count Texas, babe, because Texas, I'm sorry, you just joined. But Texas um, is joining the SEC. Like, I don't like, care. Years? They don't want to oh. be a part. They're their own thing anyway. They don't want to oh. be a part. They don't even want to be a part of the U.S. They literally just want to be their own thing. So we're like, in Texas. Like <laughs> both of us are in Texas. And I got to be honest with you, you're totally right. It's an insane state. <laughs> Wait, back up. What's the SEC? Oh, uh, Sophie, uh, India doesn't do football. So, oh, okay. like, I know the problem. You- India doesn't do. How, I don't follow how, it either anymore, but still. it's not the it's not the um what do you call it the the exchange the um the, the you know what I'm talking about like for, it's money it's like a bank term term oh. it's a, it's not that but it's so it's southeastern conference football. the southeastern conference yeah for college football for college okay. football well for college, I'm, tide, roll college tide, football I, I don't yes. watch football but I'm also asking because some of our audience isn't even in the U S so they might also be like well, the hell are they what is the about? SEC yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, and people were like, people were like, well, what about Florida? And I was like, no, Florida's not really the South. So you don't count the ACC either? I mean, it's literally literally Atlantic Coastal Conference, no? Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's such a, such a li- wow. I, listen. It's funny. I like, I love that. I, I, it's very small, <laughs> small. It's very small. I stand by it though, and people can come and hate me. They, I was literally being yelled at by like Southern comedians. And it was like one girl's from Georgia. And I was like, and she was like, I, and I was like, I included you. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> um, Although historically though, that oh. those more than just those five states. When we looked at the history of government and Aubrey can speak to this better than I can. Oh, yes. The, the, how many states are included in quote the South was like mind boggling to me. Well, what, um, are, what did they, what did they, um, what did they include? What are, did they include like Virginia and stuff? Yeah. A lot of it, yeah. I mean, a lot of, of it course. is based on, you know, the Confederacy who seceded, you know, yeah. Virginia, but then they include West Virginia, which didn't secede. And then it, for some, like the U.S. Census goes all the way up to Delaware and Maryland is the South, and I'm like, really? It's no so Delaware, high. and Maryland. How is, you, you how can't. Is that the South, but that, yeah, that's Northeast. There's yeah, cra- there's, there's, the there's, there's crabs. It's it's weird that the line. <laughs> there's like, crabs in, in. There's not crawfish. No, it's so weird. But we like it's like you gotta you gotta include Kentucky, the Carolinas, Florida, Texas. You gotta include Arkansas. I guess. I guess. All oh, those. okay. All right. Fine. I'll include. Okay, help me. I'll include. I'll include Kentucky and Arkansas. Um, I, <laughs> I. I'll include those. I will say I won't include the Carolinas. I will stand firm on that. Um, but I pretty, will not include. But they're so nice. But what pretty doesn't mean that, that everything. I think New York is pretty. New York's oh, gorgeous. It's New it's York okay. is her own thing. Um, okay. <laughs> but I do think Flor- uh, Florida is actually part of the SEC. So I'm just. Like I Definitely. want everyone who does listen that has football knowledge SEC, but maybe maybe I just don't like to include the those Urban did. Meyer who used to coach at Florida for so long, uh, and now coaches for the Jaguars. So anyway, it's a personal thing. <laughs> and then books, we look at the book sales by state, and all of a sudden the book sales for Florida just drop. Like nope, she didn't include us. We're not buying the book. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. So. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Sophie, you did eventually settle in Alabama. I, I know we talked about you being an army kid and moving around a lot, but um, we would love to talk about your college years. Um, and maybe you can um, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I went to, so I ended up settling in a, in a town called Arab, um, Alabama, which, Arab, but it is pronounced Arab, uh, and I will say I was going around town calling it Arab for at least a week, oh, and, no. everyone was, and everyone was making fun of me, but I was like, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm just remarried to the exact opposite of my dad, he's like a good old boy, um, you know, I, you know, southern by the grace of god but like you know oh, smoked swisher sweets all the time had a had a american flag shellac to the back of his truck just to make sure you knew you knew where he stood you know what i mean and so i'm just like confused in general <laughs> like where am i why why am i here and all these things but um I in alabama i ultimately went to alabama um and uh real tied i'm sorry i just can't say it it's actually i tried not to say it uh this go this go around um but um and when i got there well before i got there my mom was basically um encouraging me to rush a sorority because she had been in a sorority over at mississippi state and um, I kind of was, I was definitely against it at first. I was, didn't think it would be for me. Um, and mind you at the time, like I'm, I'm definitely not who I am now, you know, in 2021, I was like in pageants. I was like super, super feminine, super like had no idea I was gay. So, you know, all these things, like I need to, that to be a backstory. So I'm going into this, like, you know, really just because my mom's telling me to and I don't fight her too hard because she makes it sound so appealing because she's like you know you're gonna have 200 best friends uh after day one you know mm -hmm. and who wouldn't want that and so um I rush and I get in and um well no you and... didn't just get in though because you went you <laughs> got in and this is where the title of your book comes from you got into the most prestigious sorority <laughs> on fraternity sorority row. So, and that's like your yes. book title, the ones you want to marry, that's the reputation your sorority had. So it wasn't just you rushed and you got into a sorority, you got into the best one. Yeah. So, and, and I, I'm more familiar with the black, historically black college fraternities and sorority process, but when you rush a sorority, are you are you rushing more than one? Because like it's like a bid system, right? Where they put out the bids and then you choose from whoever wants you, right? Yeah, I mean, so the whole rush process is bonkers. So basically, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out where to start because it literally could take me two hours to get through this. Um, but um, essentially, once you arrive, you rush itself as a two week process. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're going to all of these little tea parties at these mansions, um, which is actually very ironic because most of them are in the tea party now. Um, but uh, <laughs> so you're you're going around, you're um, and you're split into these groups. Like um, people don't realize that it's like two thousand girls rush. Yes, I, I have friends that do it. At, I went to Oklahoma State University in Stillwater. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we had the whole fraternity row with the sororities and all the rush and everything. And I had a whole bunch of friends that went through it. And for like two weeks, it's just like insane. All the different activities, the teas, the different dresses, the everything yeah. so regimented. And you can go through the whole thing and have no sorority want you. A hundred percent. That is the hardest thing for some people. One or two of my friends were just crushed. They went through the whole thing. And it didn't work out. It, it didn't. But then I went, I had a couple that got into a sorority and by their senior year, they're like, I'm just done. <laughs> so, yeah. But for yeah. some people, it sticks and it's lifelong friends though. For some people and for most of the people that I was in the, that was in my pledge class, they are, they are all still friends and they all still, yeah. you know, go, they're all going to each other's weddings. Well, now they're not because they all are, they, they were married four years ago and now they're on their second or third kid. You know, it's no shade. It's just like, that's just the truth. And so, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember when I was, it was the first day and um, I had no idea what to expect. Um, or excuse me, it was the second day. So it was, so we, I go through the first day um, and the second day I go back to um, my group because they split you up into groups to make it easier because uh, you're just like, you know, it is very militant. You're going around to all these houses at different times. It's the way that they can divide it up. So all 2000 girls can rush. And one of the girls who I thought was like, she seemed like the it girl. Like she seemed like the girl that was going to get asked back to every sorority. I was like, this girl's got it in the bag. You know, I could, I, I'm certainly not going to make it, but this girl's going to make it is what tells you which sororities have asked you back. Um, and the sorority that she wanted to be a part of didn't ask her back. And she dropped out that day and transferred to Ole Miss. Of college? Just like dropped out of Alabama and just transferred to Ole Miss. Wow. And That's... wow. Yeah. So wow. Yeah. Um, to be super <laughs> transparent, I have no idea what rush week is. I had to Google it and I know I'm not the only person. <laughs> Yeah, no, podcast, totally. who wouldn't know. So short version for our audience, Rush Week is more officially known as Recruitment Week. It's a period of time when fraternities and or sororities recruit students to their respective Greek letter organizations. And it happens right in the beginning of the school year. And if you are not part of the U.S., this sounds totally bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys make it sound like it's bonkers regardless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're- It is bonkers, yeah. Yeah. Even if you're not a part of, I mean, I went to, I, I was, grew up in Alabama and I had never heard of it. So like, it was bonkers to me and it's bonkers to people that don't even, that grew up on the East coast, the West coast, or that literally didn't grow up in a house where their parents, you know, were still living their past lives as sorority attorney members. And, you know, I had known my mom as a sorority girl, but we didn't really talk about it that much. Only when I was about to go through rush and it was only because of her because her best friend from college, um, what her her best friend from college's daughter was a recruitment chair of the sorority that I ultimately got in um, oh, because the connections. <laughs> I had the connects, yes. And um, I remember when I um, I remember when I oh when I met. Mary Catherine for the first time, which is the name of the of the recruitment chair. And we were over at Mary Catherine's house and my mom and her friend are catching up. And I'm like, I bring over my resume because like they had like the best grades on campus. You have to have a, you know, a certain GPA even to even be looked at and like it's a whole thing. And they're talking for like 20 minutes and I'm like waiting for Mary Catherine to come down the stairs. Um, and all of a sudden Mary Catherine just like saunters down and she's like has this like oversized sweater on her hair is like in a ponytail but like loosely pulled together with like barely held together by a string she's like clutching a cup of coffee as if for warmth and she's just like just kind of floats and I remember being like this is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my entire life who is this angel? <laughs> um, and then she like picks up my resume, just like with like two fingers and just flips it over and looks at it and then puts it down and is just like, you'll be fine. And then walks back upstairs. And I was like, that's it. Is, is that, that's all I had. That's it. <laughs> that's all I had to do. I'm like sweating it out over here. Wow. Sitting on, yeah. So, and then so, my mom and her mom talked for another hour and then we left. So, Sophie, this might sound really strange to you, but, um, and I don't know how much you have been able to listen to our stories, but um, I grew up in Mexico. Uh, my mom's American, my dad is Mexican. So I have intersectionality. So a lot of the U.S. like norms is very foreign to me. But sure. when I listen to your story, as well as the research that I was doing, it sounds very like the ultimate American Southern dream. Your daughter going into the sorority and going into a prestigious sorority, to say the least. How did that whole experience affect who you are today? Um, I mean, it showed me what I didn't want to be, um, hmm. which was uh, married. Um, 
by the time I turned 22. Um, to a man. And, <laughs> yeah, that's a big part. That's a big part. Because, yeah, I mean, the whole sorority, the way that our sorority works, and, you know, you've already um, alluded to that, Aubrey, is that um, our sorority was nicknamed the one, the ones you want to marry. Um, and most, if not all, of the young women were on the pursuit to get their MRS degree, which is known as your Mrs. degree, in addition to their actual. Interesting. And I was this together because, yeah, and I was putting this together because within the first week, we had a candle, our, our first candlelight ceremony, which a candlelight ceremony is literally when a girl gets engaged and all the sisters in the house sit around in a circle like a seance and we all hold a candle and she tells us about her proposal. And then we are just like, you know, we wish her, we wish her well. And so everyone, you know, you wanted a candlelight. You wanted your boyfriend to propose to you so you could have that candlelight. So you could have, you know, kind of your five minutes of fame in the house. Huh. I, and so that being said, I was on that pursuit because I'm also super competitive. So I was just like, well, I got to, I gotta, I gotta win this, you know, I gotta, get, I gotta get in there. And, um, and it didn't go so well. So I have, I have so many follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told one. you we're just peeling back the layers. There's yeah, so many layers to. to this. How do you feel about marriage now? Um, especially as you identify as an LGBTQ person, do you identify as queer? How do you feel yeah. about this? <laughs> Yeah. that's two separate questions one how do you feel about marriage no remember I told you remember I told you it's all the ruse remember this is just a scam so <laughs> um um no yeah I identify as queer I identify as a lesbian I mean um as far as marriage is concerned uh yeah I mean I I I definitely think we should have it <laughs> I mean I, I I definitely um I just kind of just went into my own world for a second of like marriage well do I want to get married um I'm kind of someone who if when I I want to I personally am like I don't want to get married till I can actually afford it and yeah. like because I don't want to be someone who's paying off their wedding and that's just a personal preference um and I'm just so career driven that I'm like kind of married to my career so that's kind of where I'm at with marriage but as far as like marriage in general yeah absolutely we should all be able to get married it's like insane that we weren't until 2015 um I you know I do hope to be married one day um and don't do it don't <laughs> okay well you said don't, it look, so now so now I've I been married for like 14 years and it's nothing but happiness and bliss and joy <laughs> don't I don't recommend it it's horrible <laughs> Horrible. Well, also Horrible. when you're also like as a lesbian, you're like even when you're not married, you're married. Yeah. Like, even when you're not married, you're fucking married. So like certificate or not, it's like, bitch, we're married. You know. So. Yeah, no, I very, yeah, I feel very. I I feel very good about it. Is it is that something that you feel like is complicated for um queer people? I think the rhetoric. Um, especially in the media um, and the lack of uh, actually healthy marriages represented in the media of lesbian couples is sorely lacking. Um, and yeah. um, I don't think that there is a good, like, tell me one married couple on TV that are happily uh, that they, married. Like that are lesbians? queer? That are, are lesbians? Queer. Mm -hmm. specifically lesbians that are queer happily married I could probably think of one show off of the top of my head and I haven't finished this show so I don't know if they end up breaking up um it's called the fosters but I don't okay, know what yeah. happens I'm to that season, couple I'm on season three of that I stopped I had trouble with that one yeah but yeah but, well I, I but think the rhetoric all... often lesbians on the media are portrayed as problematic breaking up cheating or someone dies <laughs> well that's what I was gonna say I was like well if we're not dead then yeah it's very hard for me to you know or if we're even on tv I mean that's also a whole other thing we are the representation is a lot better as far as us actually being on tv yeah. but I do think you're right as far as how we are being represented um is still you know we have a we have a ways to go um and yeah, so, so Sophia I asked that question because um I the more I ask that to queer people the more I hear them okay and or wanting marriage 
but they don't always know what that looks like. Um, because mm. not a lot tax of us breaks. know older um, lesbians. Tax are, breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tax breaks. It's but tax breaks. I'm telling you. You got it. You got to. You got to save the money. You got to. I'm Get the money. You, get the bag. It's just <laughs> tax breaks from the government. That's the only benefit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm curious. curious. Your happiness. Yeah, and but I'm curious sure. to hear um, how people's um, experiences around marriage and society and culture um, changes their view of marriage. Um, but I did want to yeah. ask you a little bit more about the rushing of a, the sorority because I did see recently that the University of Alabama's rushing exploded on TikTok. Yeah, um, yeah. Why? Why did you choose that one? Was it solely for your mom? And how do you feel about this explosion on TikTok? <laughs> why did I choose? Why did I choose Alabama Rush? Yeah, it's because of your mom. Yeah, no, just because of my mom. Yeah, I, I literally just did it because of my mom. My mom was the one that was like, you know, you'll make friends, you'll have a good time. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right. And, and how do you feel about the explosion on TikTok? Well, as a comedian, it was perfect because I, I created a character, uh, which I've done before. And her name is May June and she, uh, but she was a lesbian rushing. Um, and, uh, and so I, I did a couple of, of vids on TikTok and on, put them on Instagram. And so for me, I was like capitalizing on it. It was also really nice because my book came out literally right after it exploded. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. And so couldn't have been more perfect. Um, that's me just being... <laughs> that, that's me just being self-centered I'm completely acknowledging that um but um taking but full all, advantage <laughs> taking full, you have to you gotta you gotta take advantage everyone take advantage where you can um but I do think uh I mean yeah of course it was nuts um and the whole I mean I don't really understand I'm still trying to understand TikTok in general so when I was watching it play out, my brain was, my brain was also being melted, even though I had been, you know, through, through that, but none of us, you know, this was 2009, none of us were like standing in front of a camera and being like, you know, my dress is from Target. Like, you know, like none of us did that. We just like would tell each other. Um, but uh, it was also like, I was, it was also nice to finally be like, okay, finally everyone knows what I'm talking about because whenever I explain it, no one ever understands and uh, their, or their brains just break. Mm -hmm. So finally they were like, I was like, okay, see, here it is. If you want any sort of insight, there it is. Go look at it. Go look at it. I told you it's real. <laughs> yes. it's not <laughs> and how do you well, feel well, about well, this um, explosion that's happened also on TikTok of the La Dollar Beans or lesbians or better, the what? straight women coming onto TikTok being like, I La thought Dollar. I was straight and I'm clearly I'm so not. Confused. It's, it's a whole. TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. So what is this? What's going on? It's a whole subculture of new lesbians on TikTok. But no, um, you said TikTok. I'm out. Never mind. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm asking Sophie, not you. Okay, well, I'm old. I don't. Okay, I just. All right, well, I stepped um, away for a second. Huh? To be honest, I don't know what you're talking about either. Oh <laughs> yes, yes. See, it's not just me. I'm telling womp, you, womp. there are too many subcultures. There's too many smaller subculture fads. And it's just impossible to keep up with all of them. Cottage yeah. Core and all these, it's just too much. Let's just all be, you know, at home with books. That's my solution. <laughs> that's Aubrey's <laughs> dream. That's my solution for everything. Just everybody don't talk to anybody. Just go read a book. Um, okay. So on that note, Sophie, what do you hope people take away from your book? Um, wow. Um, I honestly, I just hope that it can, you know, I, I guess I just, I never really had a book like this growing up. And um, for me, like, you know, we talk about queer representation now and like us being like aggravated, um, I guess still on a macro level, but I would say some of it's micro at this point. Whereas when, you know, I was growing up and y'all were growing up, you know, we had, you know, it was Ellen and that was pretty much it. And so I really thought, if you were a lesbian, then you looked like Ellen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there are lesbians that do look like Ellen and queer people that do look like Ellen, but there are definitely queer people and lesbians that don't. 
obviously. And so I think like, had I had that representation, had I had the sort of literature, um, uh, it would have been maybe easier for me to figure it out. It would be, it would have been quicker. Um, and so for anything, if any, if, it, if, if anyone could take anything away is I hope it just kind of serves as, you know, helping someone along their journey and whether or not they've like completed their journey into queerness or they're just figuring it out or they have no effing clue and they figure it out when they read my book. That's what I hope. And it can just like serve as kind of like, almost like comfort food, um, you know, for, for people who are, uh, you know, really trying to figure out who they are. And specifically, I would say queer women, but. Well, um, I think, okay. So we want to ask maybe one more question and then I want to leave time for you to talk about your upcoming appearances. Reading your book, you grew up in so many predominantly white spaces. Yeah. Do you think that, and in the South, in a conservative, and you went to conservative college and the military is very conservative. Do you think growing up in all these kind of conservative places made it harder? Or maybe it, it just made it harder for you to maybe come into your own or find your own lesbian identity because of what you were surrounded with? Um, I think it definitely had something to do with it. And then, in, but only, but not in the aspect of I'm so scared if I come out here. Um, no, but it's about life. exposure though. It's just like, you're yeah. just not being around it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's also weird because, you know, I, I'd like to say it, it, it didn't have as much to do with it, I think, as, as uh maybe it seemed like it would because my mom had lesbian friends mm -hmm. they were still her friends when we were in the south that yep. didn't change my mom had gay friends um who would like you know and you know and southern gay southern gay friends and we're like you know we're all hanging out so i think it really was just a matter of i mean and there were people who people thought were like lesbians at my high school but I think because I just was such a late bloomer in so many respects, and because I was like really like latching on to the identity that I had in high school, which was musical theater kid, um, was, you know, pageant girl and, um, you know, just really just trying to like hoping my friends that are cheerleaders like me, you know, but not in a, now I know in a, in a queer way, but um, <laughs> that's really all I, <laughs> that's all I was really, you know, focused on. And so, um, you know, I really don't think it had as much to do with it as, as you would think it would. Um, okay. See, which is that was my, well, no, that was always my thing. Growing up in the Air Force and then moving to Oklahoma, I just was not exposed. And I was an Air Force kid on bases back before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I was back on yeah. Air Force bases Same. when it was still like, this is pre-94, this is before that even happened, you were still, this could be discharged uh, with just the hint of it. And I was just never grew up around the culture. So it took me forever to come out. And then so I just always wonder if that's just me or I was a late bloomer like you. So, okay, that's a very interesting perspective. Um, what does your yeah. family think of this whole venture? What about your show, about your book? Did they read it? Um, where do they stand? Um, family's been very supportive. They have read it. They've both read it. I gave them each a copy. Um, it was like the last draft before I did like any like tiny, tiny punch ups. So nothing had really, nothing really changed too much, um, from what they read. Um, and because I wanted to give them mainly, I wanted to give them the chance to like, tell me if I got something incorrect, especially when it came to my dad, because there's a lot of military stuff in there. There's a lot of military, you know, terminology, and I want to make sure that I'm using it correct, you know, correctly and all those things. And also, like, I felt felt that it was important that, like, you know, they're very, they're, they're main characters in this, and, you know, they deserve to see it and know what's being said. And um, I definitely wasn't, like, giving them huge permission to change anything. But if there was something that was, like, so, uh, you know, so hard for it to be in the book. 
I was welcome to that conversation. And luckily both my parents, well, my mom was like, well, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so she didn't care. So whatever was in it was in it. And then my dad, there was, yeah, I think there was just something that was incorrect. Um, and then, and then, I mean, he had like a, a list. He emailed me like 12 things and then he started to try to pitch jokes and I was like, okay, dad, all right, no, 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 no. That, that's not why we're here. Uh, you know, but yeah, they both came to my book launch and my stepmom. Um, they're both very, very excited. I mean, my mom has just been so excited for my career since I was, you know, told her I wanted to be a performer. Um, I think they're both just really happy that, you know, something's working out, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, speaking and, uh, of they, your... seem, they seem excited. Good. But speaking of your, um, <clears throat> book launch tell us about your upcoming shows what's going on in your life where are you going to be and where can people find you um yeah so I, I like I said I run a show called the lesbian agenda which is a very serious show where we try to enforce our new world order with our agenda <laughs> like casting Rachel Weiss in every lesbian movie until she becomes a lesbian um <laughs> it will happen and, and it will happen it will happen um she, no one's forcing her, no one's forcing her to choose these movies. I just have to say she is choosing these. <laughs> willingly. Choosing these, willingly <laughs> and keeps doing it. So, I mean, we're getting the scripts over to her team, but she does have a choice and she does keep making that choice. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they can, um, they can follow at the Lesbian Agenda show on Instagram to see upcoming shows. Um, we have one in November on uh, November 12th. Um, and then you can follow me at Sophie E. Santos on Instagram. And in addition to that, um, you know, you can go to my website, sophiesantos.com. I do comedic music. So I have stuff on Spotify for you, if anyone wants to check that out. Um, and I'm based in New York, but I'm actually going to be moving to LA uh, December 1st. So ah. it's a whole new adventure in LA and Awesome. uh you know gonna see gonna see how that see how that rocks that's you know? amazing so last but not least um we always ask our guests uh why what is the south and why is it important for us to talk about queer stories in the south oh wow um <laughs> the south is Sitting on a porch, staring at some cows, drinking sweet tea with your six foot four grandfather <laughs> who <laughs> worked in a paper mill his entire life, so he can't hear anything you say. And you're watching a football game. And I think when I think of the South, I think of, uh, oh my God, I'm going to mess up this word, Cic cicadas. Cicadas? Cicadas. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about that a lot. Um, everyone's like, they're returning. And I'm like, girl, they've been here. <laughs> <laughs> they've been here. Growing up, they've totally been here. Um, and as far as like telling queer stories, like why is it important? Yeah. Um, Specifically Southern queer stories. Because there are so many Southern queer people. And a lot of people, even though... Um, because, you know, for me, I, I love the South and I think it sucks that it has a bad reputation because of the people that are in charge. And there are so many good people that live in the South. There's so many um, queer people that live in the South. There's so many people that are on the right side of history. And it is actually the, I mean, and we, at least we saw with this election, you know, what Stacey Abrams can do. Mm. Um, Stacey and, Abrams you know I mean what she did for Georgia and it just goes to show it's like yes people are tired of it it's just like there's these crazy laws in place which I know we don't have time to get into but there's so many good people down there and it just unfortunately the louder the loudest ones are the ones that uh that suck and <laughs> um and so I think that like telling queer stories is so important and like you know highlighting you know queer people from the south is important because there are just as many queer people in the South as there are like on the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, you know, the platform's just a little bit smaller, but I'm hoping that it gets that it gets larger. 
And you guys are part of that. You guys are a part of that because you have a great podcast. Working. <laughs> We're working <laughs> on it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thank you, thank you so, much. so much. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. has been fantastic. Um, I want to be mindful of your time. So uh, Aubrey and I will add all of your um, upcoming shows as well as of your all of your social media um, in our outro. But is there anything else that you would like to add that I did not ask you for our listeners? Um. No, I think I'm good. I mean, I guess I could say Roll Tide one more time just to hammer it in. <laughs> we'll give you one more. <laughs> um, All right. Thanks for uh-huh. talking to us. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sophie, you don't want me to so do much. it? <laughs> no, I thought you did. You just did. Right. Oh, good. Okay. We'll give you. You just did. Oh, no, okay. no. You got to give me a cue. You got to give me a cue. Okay. You got one, point, two, point three, go. And Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> that was epic <laughs> so you gotta add that that's it um it was so it was yeah it was so nice to meet you both i'm so excited that we got hooked up uh, i hope i didn't ramble too much um, no it was great it, it was, was great. fabulous it was fabulous and one of these days we'll go to one of your shows because i think lesbian agenda is like the best thing that has ever existed oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. what yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you i mean we're we're you know it's I think going to LA is going to be big for the show. Um, I just hired an incredible producer. So, um, you know, obvious as hopefully you can get it on the road and um, at some point. And yeah, I would absolutely go to Texas off air and into South. Um, <laughs> the last thing I'm going to tell you, have you ever heard of Alex Dobkin? No. Okay, uh, no. you have to look up Alex Dopkin. She is not only an iconic lesbian teacher, singer, and writer, but she has a song called, I think it's called The Lesbian Agenda. You have to listen to it. it, it it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be your next, like, the thing. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, she, and she just passed away. Yes, she did. Um, and it's called The Lesbian Code. That's the song that I think you should listen to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah i'll definitely look it up the le- the lesbian code oh yeah. i see alex yeah alex, um, A-L-I-X. Um, it's a l i x um she just yeah. passed away but uh, someone introduced me to the lesbian code song and i went bananas it is not okay. only the funniest thing i've ever heard it's so relevant even to today and as a lesbian i was like friends we all must listen to the song <laughs> oh my god that's awesome yeah i'll check it out absolutely <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you both we'll so much. I have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Talk Bye. To you later. Bye. Bye. You can find more information about this episode and the show at our website, southernqueries.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Southern Queries. Queries is with two E's. Until next time, thanks for listening. Some credits. Production. Your hosts, India and Aubrey. Audio mixing by Allison Holly. Story research, Aubrey Calvin. Editing, India Bastien. This is Southern Queries. <laughs> <laughs>